I am Lee Johnson and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. And if you're not new here, I firstly want to apologize for Friday's live stream. Uh, we've been having a lot of load shedding again. Um, the government just sprung it on us on Thursday. And the live event uh, was smack bang in the middle of one of the uh, periods where we had load shedding on Friday. So, sorry I wasn't there. I did leave a note in the live chat, but I'm not sure it actually showed up. So, um, anyway, so on Friday's live, live event, I was going to talk about twilight sleep, uh, which is trance work. And so instead of doing it then, I'm going to do it today. So, today's video is going to be all about trance. Um, it's going to be quite basic, not basic, but... Uh, broad, um, an overview really, uh, rather than going into specific methods of doing trance, as there are so many of them. Um, but an understanding of trance and how you actually enter trance is very important for any method. Um, otherwise, you can just do whatever it is and you find that you're not sure if you're in trance or you don't enter trance at all because you don't know what state you're actually supposed to get into. So let's have a look at that today. So I just want to start today's video off with a reading from Meadows of Alfheim. Now, if you are new here and you're not sure what the Meadows of Alfheim are, you can find a link to the Meadows uh, from my website, leewjohnson.com. Uh, it was originally done oof, roughly, probably a bit more than 20 years ago um, by Robin Artisan and uh, <clears throat> recently added it to my site with his permission um, so that we could get up again because it was an absolutely fantastic um, journey that you took into traditional witchcraft. Uh, so anyway, I just want to start off with a reading from that about Twilight Sleep. Agnes says... The secret of the trance is the greatest of all secrets, for it is the key that unlocks the door to deeper mysteries. The trance is called twilight sleep. It is the cornerstone of witchcraft. To naturally induce it may not be easy for you, because the key is to realize that this state exists already, and you are in it as we speak, and then to still the mind enough, become passive enough to realize it. However, you must allow yourself to feel, really feel. There is power in everything, and in the nature of power is motion. Power is flowing through everything like a river, like a breath, like a wind. It is so constant and obvious that you have become numb to it. Let yourself feel it now. Turn your attention outside of your body and feel the obvious and great power of the land around you. Once you feel that, you can begin to realize that this power is inside your body as well. Take a deep breath. This pulls power into you. Do you feel it enlivening you? Now turn your awareness to your mind. What is the relationship of your mind to the world around you? That is easy. Take the example of the oak tree. The oak tree grows up from the ground. It needs the waters to nourish it, and the light and the air. It needs the rains and the winds, and the entire world around it. Can you truly separate the tree from its surroundings? No. It is a part of everything, totally woven into the tapestry of creation. So are you. So is everything. With this in mind, to say that you are here and everything else you see is over there is nonsense. Everything, including you, is simply one thing, one whole. You have only been taught to think of yourself as separate from your environment, but the truth is, you are one with it. So, what of the mind? The same way you cannot separate your physical being from the world, you cannot separate your mind from the world. All parts of you are in the weave of life, not just your body. Your mind is involved with the weave as intimately as the rest of you. Your mind is interwoven with every form in creation. The strange notions you have of a lone self 
are nothing more than delusion. You have a self, for certain, but a greater and more expansive self than you ever dreamed. It is certainly not limited to a simple human body with a short human lifespan. Embrace this. When you accept these things, you can feel power. And more importantly, you can begin to experience the world as if it were part of your mind, which it is. What you call your mind is simply the awareness of nature in you. All things share it. Look at the trees around you now. Be calm, relax. Feel the power flowing through here. Feel the power in the tree. Your mind is part of all this. This world is your mental state. Do not look at the tree as separate from yourself. You and it flow from the same source, the womb. Let yourself be open. Do not think. Your thoughts come in terms of delusion and duality, which is false. Do you sense that? The tree is saying something. You know what it is saying already. Let yourself accept that knowing. The motion of the forest around you suddenly seems much more vivid. The great awareness you sensed in it before is all of a sudden very intense. Then you realize that it is your mind that is intense and your mind and the awareness beneath nature are the same thing. For a moment you feel dizzy and then you sense the great mother's unfathomable mind pooling into your small form, making you feel that you are someone. But now you see that she is the force that exists, sustaining your sense of self. She is the reality. And you feel as though you are a dream of her, a reflection of her. And so are all the trees and plants and birds around you. By losing yourself to her, you realize that you are her eternally, and you exist as nature exists. You know without doubt that you are one with all forms sprung from the cauldron. The feeling of bliss is nearly overwhelming. You look up and see three ravens suddenly take flight, and then you understand. The great one of nature is talking through the movements of every leaf, every animal, and so are all her creations. The voice of nature is so loud and obvious and powerful that you sway inside. The trees are speaking, their communication sweeps through you, riding on the winds of the power you suddenly sense, like a wind blowing through everything. You feel afraid that your spirit may be swept from your body by these power winds, but Agnes speaks to you and says, Welcome, my friend, to the world you once knew. Worry not, your awareness will not leave your body, for these winds are not intense enough to carry you. That is an experience for another day. Now, I think that last bit um, that Agnes says is actually quite important. Um, when we're talking about twilight sleep and trance, we're not talking about the type of trance where you lose consciousness um, or you get into some other state where you're flopping around on the floor and, you know, speaking in tongues or what have you. Um, during twilight sleep, you are actually conscious of your own surroundings. So you, you won't get swept away, you won't be taken away to some realm uh, where you can never find your, find your way back or anything like that. Um, so twilight sleep, as I said in the beginning of, of that uh, passage, is the cornerstone of witchcraft. And the reason for that is that many of the practices um, that are found in witchcraft are about um, stepping between worlds. It's part of being the hedge rider. So the hedge rider um, is basically the witch that will move from world to world. So they will step between worlds. They will go and meet the spirits, the gods, the goddesses. Um, they will talk to the land whites. Um, they will go into the fairy realm. Um, so it is about, it's, it's a lot about, you know, inter, um, interacting with the spirits and the fairies and the gods and the goddesses and in order to do that you need to enter twilight sleep in order to actually move over the hedge and the hedge represents a boundary between this world and the other world and uh, so trance state or twilight sleep as we call it is extremely important and as as mentioned is the cornerstone of 
traditional witchcraft. Now, to enter Twilight is actually not that difficult. But, as mentioned in there also, it's something that we always, it's a state that we always have, but we're not aware of it. And the reason for not being aware of it is because our minds are so active. Um, we're so involved in our day-to-day -day life and things that are happening now, but actually not now. We're mostly thinking about the past or we're thinking about the future. Um, we very seldom actually focus on the now, the here, um, you know, the, the point where we are in existence at this present moment. Um, in a way, that's a bit contradictory because um, time is not actually linear. So everything is happening at the same moment. Um, but, you know, we, we need to obviously think in terms of linear time in order to convey a thought or explain something or actually understand something because um, it's the way our minds work. So, as I said, usually we are in the past or we're in the future. Very seldom are we in the now. And the, the way to get into the present moment, the now state, is to actually do something like meditation, breath work. Um, they're very important. And the reason for that is that we can calm our minds down, we can silence our minds, and we can then get into a trance state and Castaneda would say, stop the world. But as mentioned, we are always in that, in that state of in-between. And this why it's called twilight, quite twilight sleep, because the twilight is a, an in-between state. Um, it's that time of day where we're in between um, day and night. Um, it's that twilight space. And shamans um, actually use the twilight as a passage into uh, non-ordinary non -ordinary realities. Um, so twilight sleep is actually very important, not just in traditional witchcraft, um, in shamanism generally actually. And traditional witchcraft in this sense is very shamanic in nature. Um, so meditation and breath work, extremely important. And you can actually get into twilight sleep just through meditation and breath work. So when I say breath work, um, one of the, the best ways to actually breathe is to use what I like to call belly breath or belly breathing. It's also called yogic breath um, or vase breathing. So basically as you inhale, you your stomach expands and as you exhale, your stomach contracts and you breathe in, in that way. And what you'll find is as you carry on breathing in this way, you become more and more relaxed. You become more and more focused on the now. You, your, your thoughts quieten down and you find that as you become more relaxed, there's also a point where as you exhale, you suspend uh, time. So, and you, you, sus you suspend everything, your breath, um, time, the world, your mind, um, and then you breathe in again. Um, but that is the basis of all of the trance states, if you ask me. Um, they all involve some kind of breath work, even if you're doing treading, treading the mill, which I'll, I'll mention, I'll get into just now. Um, but meditation and breath work are the, are the foundation. Um, you can get into twilight sleep just through meditation and breath work. I do it, uh, it takes me about maybe 10, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Um, I do find that if I... Um, I'm actually wanting to get into that twilight sleep. Um, I've got it on my mind and I'm thinking about it. And while I'm, medi while I'm in meditation and uh, breathing, it takes me a lot longer because I've, I've constantly got it in my mind and I'm waiting for that point to actually come. If I'm just doing, just sitting and just doing nothing and not thinking about anything in particular, in about 10, 15 minutes, I'm in that twilight sleep. So try not to think about it while you're doing it and just let it happen. If you start chasing it, it's, you're probably going to carry on chasing it because it's going to keep running away from you. Um, but you know, as, as in the passage in or the reading on the website and what I keep saying is that we are already in that state. So all we're doing is just quieting the mind down 
so that it's not so active and thinking about everything else. And once the mind becomes quiet and the thoughts become clear, we get into that state of nowness. And through that, we realize and find the twilight sleep. Um, and from there, you can then venture, journey, um, do whatever you need. There are various different ways in which different witches will, um, you know, experience this this state or, or what goes beyond the state. Um, journeying into the fairy realms, um, going to the witches sabbat, generally just riding the hedge, um, moving into the other worlds, into the underworlds, into the lower worlds. Uh, what you can also use it for is to actually find a space within the other world and many people will term this as, as um, creating your own astral temple and it's the same type of thing so you, what you would do you would find your own space and you would make it your place so you can go there anytime and you can rest relax you can learn you can do ceremony you can do ritual um, you know you can invite spirits in and, and you can talk to them and learn from them but it becomes your space and your space only so the other popular way of entering twilight sleep is to do the treading the mill and treading the mill is is basically a repetitive act of actually walking around the circle now there are various ways you can actually go around um well no, let me rather say the compass round rather than the circle um, so you'll be walking around the compass round. Um, now, some people will just walk. Other people will stomp in a rhythm. Okay, so some people will do an actual dance around the circle, which um, for me, I find it a bit distracting. Uh, it doesn't get me into that, that state properly. Uh, what I prefer to do is just walk. And Robert Cochran, and Cochran actually mentions that what you should do is you should point with your arm um, or point with your finger to the center of the compass where you have the focal point and you kind of put your head slightly back and over your shoulder your chin over your shoulder and then you walk that way and you just keep walking around and around and around and the reason for that is that it cuts the blood supply off slightly to your brain which actually induces a trance state also um, but you know there's, as I say, there's different ways in which people do it, but obviously there is a, a, a foundation to it, a basis, um, a commonality to what you do in order to reach twilight sleep through this treading the mill method. Um, so, see, you know, try and find out what other people are doing, experiment with it, and see what works for you. Um, but basically, you have a focal point in the middle. Now, that focal point could be the stang. Uh, it could be a, um, a need fire, um, it could just be a candle, something that just holds your focus. And then as you're walking, you are looking at the focal point and you're constantly going around and you can use a chant as well. So you've got the, the repetition here. Um, if you're stomping, you're getting almost the same thing as, as drumming uh, or clacking or something like that. So it's that repetition of something of a sound um, and the constant motion plus you are focused on something and what you find is as you keep going round and round and round is that your thoughts get quieter your mind calms down and you get into that now state and then you will start entering into the twilight sleep and once you're in the twilight sleep you just fall down on the floor and you do, you take your journey, you do whatever you need to do, um, or whatever you plan to do in order to go and meet with, with the fairies, with the gods, the goddesses, and just journey into the, into the underworld. Um, so that is, that is actually twilight sleep, um, trance work. As I said, when we say trance work, we're not talking about anything from voodoo where you get um, uh, ridden by, by the lower, um, and you lose consciousness or you fall down on the floor, you flop around or anything like that. It's nothing like that. You 
maintain complete consciousness of, of your environment around you, um, you probably will find that you, you don't lose consciousness of the environment around you, physical environment, but it gets shoved to the back. Um, and what you're actually focusing on during the journey becomes apparent and becomes or comes to the forefront. So it's still going on there. You're still conscious. You know it's happening, but it, it's not important. Um, your journey, meeting the spirits and things like that become the most important thing during that twilight sleep um, and during the journey itself. Um, so it's basically just a shift in consciousness that happens. Um, so anyway, that's twilight sleep. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about last week, but couldn't. Uh, so at least we're caught up now. And I will therefore see you on Friday. And there will be a live this Friday, hopefully. They won't spring load shedding on us again. But if they do, it should be a different schedule this week. So we should get there. And uh, this Friday, we're going to be talking about walk cunning, uh, herbalism. Um, I want to bring in a bit of the poison path, uh, flying ointments, and possibly have a bit of discussion about the witch's sabbat as well. And Reverend Kai will be there with me. Kai is an amazing person. Um, they are just so knowledgeable. It's unbelievable. Um, I met Kai 20 years ago, and I learned so much from, from Kai. <laughs> it's, just, it's just one of those one of those people that, you know, comes into your life and just blows you out of the waters. Um, so anyway, so Reverend Kai will be, be there with me, and we'll talk about herbalism. Uh, Kai is a herbalist, uh, trained very knowledgeable herbalist, uh, so this should be an interesting discussion. And and again, you can ask whatever questions you want to. Uh, we'll just do the wart cunning and herbalism part first, and then we'll get into questions and answers after that. Um, you can ask us anything you want to about wart cunning, about herbalism, about witchcraft, about chaos magic, about anything. And uh, anyway, so. See you on Friday. Thanks. Cheers.